I am not a woman. There is no subjective definition. You can't ask me to acknowledge that you're a part of a social minority like being trans. Then in the same breath, tell me you're not and accept you as a woman. Have I been socialized as a woman? Yes. Does everyone I interact with on a daily basis recognize me as a woman without any over- What is a woman? A woman is anyone who wants to identify as one. Does anyone else want to, I mean, what is a woman? It's what they identify as. That's a circular, you cannot, a cat is a cat because they are a cat. That's not like, this isn't a gotcha, it's just a genuine question. I hold on, let's, hold on, go ahead. Um, I didn't have anything to say yet. But, what is a woman? A person. No, but what is the definition of, what is a woman? I don't know, I'm confused now. This is a biological man beating a woman. Fox delivering oh, the knees and that's oh. it! Felon Fox! Holy cow! Oh. Game over! Wow. And a quick finish to our first... Our first women's $20,000 championship tournament fight. Fellas! Queen of Swords! Oh. How you feeling right now? I'm feeling excellent. That was sweet, huh? Did you like that? Yeah! And I want to tell everyone else, I'm coming in this in this tournament. Every woman in this tournament better look out. I'm freaking coming. Hey, liberal woman. Is this the progression you guys were looking for? The equality you were looking for? Where now you have a biological man beating the crap out of a biological woman? And that's called inclusivity? Keep clapping, seals. So do I need to explain why this is a problem? I'm sorry if you guys have been following me. You already know how I feel about trans women competing against biological women in sports. I don't think that it is fair. And this is the perfect example. Here you have a biological man who is now a trans woman training all their lives in UFC, switching over to the female division and beating the crap out of biological women. And because they identify as a woman, they get away with it. I don't understand how any person, any liberal person, any progressive person, any feminist that's fourth wave or third wave can look at this and with a serious face say that this is inclusivity and that this is okay. It's not. And you know what? Saying that doesn't make you transphobic. It makes you logical. So activists occupied Oklahoma Capitol on Monday to try to stop conservative lawmakers from passing bills banning the transitioning of children in the state, as well as restrictions on teachers hiding trans identity from their parents. You know, seeing all of these adults protesting, wanting these children to have this affirming care and mutilation of their body got me to thinking, I wonder how many people actually know the dark history of gender affirming care and where it all came from. It's time for history lesson. So a man by the name of John Money was a psychologist and sexologist back in the 1950s. He coined the term gender identity. He was among the first to take the word gender out of the realm of, of grammar and apply it to people. Because until him, you know, we never said that people have a gender. Well, people have a sex and gender is words have gender. See, John believed that gender was a social construct that one's biology had nothing to do with their sexual identity. You could be a girl or a boy, it didn't matter what your genitalia was. And this was a relatively new idea back in the 1950s. John believed in nurture versus nature. So in his view, gender was on a spectrum. So if you were a boy raised as a girl, you're a girl. Sound familiar? He believed that true happiness is found in a life of perverse sexual experimentation. John Money was a psychologist and professor at Johns Hopkins University. Gender ideology was his brainchild. In fact, he coined the terms gender identity and gender roles. And according to Money, babies are gender neutral at birth. And ultimately, environment determines whether a person is a man or a woman. And this doctor was on a mission to have his ideology become the norm in Western culture. And this is where it takes a very dark turn. Meet Bruce and Brian Reimer two twin boys born in 1965. The twin boys had a medical condition called phimosis, which is where the foreskin of the penis cannot be pulled back. So the parents took the twins to the doctors 
to get this fixed because they couldn't urinate. And a doctor's requested that the boys have circumcision done. However, something went drastically wrong. When they tried to circumcise him, they actually burnt off his genitals. And this mother who saw this very successful doctor on TV talking about how you can raise a boy as a girl, she contacted him and he had convinced her that they should raise Bruce as a girl. And what better way to prove that this is normal than by using these twin boys as his test subjects? He had Bruce as his main subject and he also had his brother, Brian, as the control subject. He instructed the parents not to say anything to Bruce. Treat him as a girl because gender is just a social construct. Biology has nothing to do with how you raise this child. Now, Dr. Money knew that this was an experimental type of ideology, but he still went along with it and convinced the parents who were desperate to go along with this scheme. Unfortunately, this set Bruce up for a very, very hard life. See, he went from Bruce to Brenda, believing he was a female, but never truly feeling like a female. His biology was calling him to be a male, but society was calling him a female. If Brenda didn't fully accept being female as his identity, it would disprove Dr. Money's theory and his book about gender being a result of social construction. At seven years old, the boys started to be subjected to more sexualized experiments, like being asked what the differences are between boys and girls, and taught the sexual roles played by men and women. The doctor would make them role play the positions themselves, like Brian standing behind Brenda and leaning his crotch against his brother's behind. He would also force the boys to inspect each other's genitals. Dr. Money was a pervert and a pedophile. The twins later described how Dr. Money would force them at a young age to undress and perform dominant and submissive positions in front of him while he allegedly photographed them. Brenda continued to struggle. And then Dr. Money had the bright idea to have Brenda undergo a vaginal plasty. He even had her meet with an actual transgender person to convince her to have the sex change. Is there anything you'd like to ask me or anything you'd like to say? He thought that when Brenda saw someone who had voluntarily submitted to a genital operation, she would be willing to have surgery too. Brenda at this time had it. She went to her mother and said, look, if I have this surgery, I'm going to end up killing myself. Brenda's mom, out of desperation, finally told her the truth, that Brenda was really Bruce, a male at birth. Brenda was relieved. He ended up changing his name to David, got off of all female hormones, and had reconstructive surgery to resemble the male anatomy again. He got married and adopted three children. Dr. Money knew that his experiment was a failure. However, he was still going around the community telling people that it was a success. And he made it seem as though his idea and ideology of gender affirming care worked. Well, the twin brothers were not happy about this and they wanted to speak out publicly against this doctor to let everyone know that he was a fraud. Unfortunately though, the damage had already been done. Brian had a mental break and developed schizophrenia from all of the trauma that he faced as a child. And in 2002, he ended up overdosing and killing himself. Two years later in 2004, David killed himself. Now, why is this story so important to talk about today? Because where we are today, as far as our ideology with gender, stems from one man, Dr. John Money. And psychologists and medical professionals still reference him today. Psychologists and sexologists today still consider Dr. Money to have been a brilliant scientist, which has resulted in wide acceptance of his gender theory. No matter how the left tries to repackage it, this is the origin. And this is exactly why I will never be in favor of gender affirming care for minors. There's no such thing as biological men. That's not a real thing. That is a transphobic dog whistle. What it's doing is it's trying to justify transphobia using science when, first of all, man is a term associated with gender and not with sex. But even if we were talking about males, sex is also a spectrum. So to acknowledge biology and that biology actually is a factor in sex is transphobic. So science is transphobic. Well, let me tell you why this perspective is nonsense. Let's take a look. So this is Valentina Portrillo, born Fabrizio Bratillo. Valentina just won their eighth gold in indoor track, as you can see here. Sanulli Petrillo. Petrillo sul finale. 
So it looks like that spectrum that the trans community keeps talking about actually isn't a spectrum. See, when you have a biological advantage as a man, which is a biological term, you are going to be biological woman. It doesn't matter how you identify. It doesn't matter how many hormones you're on. If you have the body structure of a man, you are inherently going to have an advantage over biological women. And this is why I was so excited this week when I announced that World Athletics is going to be banning transgender athletes from world ranking competitions because at the end end of the day, like the CEO says, Sebastian Coe, it is about fairness for women above all else. Sorry, call me a transphobe. I don't care.